Quihanna Trail. I'm on the main section of trail right now, headed toward the West Cross Connector, about three and a half miles in. Beautiful day, 50 some degrees, sunshine, can't ask for a lot better. Psalm 118.24, this is the day that the Lord has made, we will rejoice and be glad in it. Praise Jesus. Hiking down along this little stream here. Beautiful little area. We had a trail just past the West Cross connector. This is the first real downhill I've had, so kind of enjoying that. Really is a very beautiful day. Supposed to be around 60 degrees. A little bit of sunshine. I'll take it. Walking along the Quihanna Trail here. Through this rocky section. There's a creek down to my right. Down in the valley. That crossed it just a little bit ago. It has some pretty cool little cascades on the bridge where you cross. Not even really fully sure how far I am in to this trail. But I'm going to guess maybe around seven miles ish so got about another nine to eleven miles to go for the rest of the day and it's uh not too bad of walking so far and so nice big boulder right there coming up to the top of the roberts run drainage there are some beautiful views going back down over some beaver ponds and a big open meadow area and now we're back into the hemlocks. It's uh, one of those features of Pennsylvania forest that is incredibly beautiful. Is that the very headwaters of almost every single one is just loaded with hemlock trees for better or for worse, depending on what you like. But I'm a big fan, so just working my way up towards the top here and should be crossing a road here fairly soon. Should put me within about five, six miles of making camp tonight. So, about three hours of daylight left. So, should be pulling into campsite. Good time. Coming down off Chestnut Ridge. It's more of a oak fern forest in here. Wind has picked up and it seems like some clouds have moved in. I don't think it's supposed to rain tonight. I really hope it's not supposed to rain because this is supposed to be the nice day. So, uh, just working my way down. Should cross the road here soon, then cross Caledonia Pike, then down into Gifford Run, where I'm planning on staying the night. One of the things I really like about this Quihanna area, and I don't know if it's possible that it is in other parts of the state, and I know it is because I've seen it before, but these very tall ferns, it's almost something ancient looking, and right now they're turning yellow and they're just very beautiful I really enjoy them and I think it just adds kind of a unique character to this area which I really enjoy so just head it down into the uh, Caledonia Pike area and then down to Gifford Run for the night it's the morning of day two I'm hiking down along Gifford Run beautiful little drainage yeah, uh, camped along the stream last night. It's real beautiful down here right now. Everything's changing, all the leaves. A lot of yellows from the maples. Got the hemlocks and white pines. Just a real nice spot down here. So, yeah, it's cloudy, maybe 55. I think it's supposed to get up into the 60s today, but it is supposed to rain. I don't know when it's supposed to start. I'm really hoping that it's going to be later um, because I'd really like to get to camp and set up while it's not pouring down rain. So, kind of level walking so far today. A little bit uphill to a couple of spots. I saw a couple of deer coming up out of Gifford Run and heard something tramping around in the weeds. I'm not sure what that was, but uh, yeah, this kind of nice flat plateau here. Nice ferny stuff. Uh, still hoping the rain holds off. I was told that 
it may well be pretty decent during the day today and then as it gets closer to dark then start raining I'm really hoping that's the case notice this sign here it says QT cross connector lost run road is what I'm standing on the Quihanna trail goes straight and you can see the yellow blaze there where the trail turns the Pennsylvania Wilds trail follows this connector trail uh, about 10 more miles till you hit the north side of this trail. So you walk down this road a ways and it cuts off to the right into the woods down over the hill. So we turned on to the Crawford Vista Trail and now we're coming out here to the Crawford Vista. And wow, this is pretty spectacular. I've been along this trail a lot of times and I've never actually went out on this particular trail. Not quite sure why I didn't, but talk about beautiful. This is amazing. You can see a long ways around there. Oh. Wow. Trail cuts to the right here and goes down into the woods again. Heading down to something called the Bridge Trail, and then I'll follow that up, connect back into the East Cross Connector Trail. I'll stop and take a few photos here, and then we're walking up along this Bridge Trail here on heading back toward the Connector Trail. It's a very neat landscape, almost barren, with these beautiful stream down here, these big boulders all the way up and down the side of the stream. It's, it's very beautiful. Uh, it makes for a very nice walk. And uh, gentle, gentle grade too, which is nice right now. <laughs> it's almost lunchtime, so getting kind of hungry and ready to make my lunch and sit down for a little bit. Finishing up the East Cross connector here, I should be about a half mile to go before I hit the other trail, uh, which would be the north side of the Quahana Trail. This trail has been quite a bit longer than the maps say. Um, I'm guessing I've probably put 15 miles on today, just on that part. So, four miles on the south part of the Quihanna. So I'm probably pushing 19. You notice a lot of this laurel and oak. It's very pretty. It's a little cloudy out still. It's a little bit of sprinkles off and on today. Hoping to make camp before things get really bad. So here they are supposed to be tonight, but I certainly wouldn't mind if they were wrong, so uh, Yeah, just really uh, Pretty decent day overall Got a really late start today It rained a lot last night, and I really wanted to try and wait on it to Calm down a little bit before I broke camp uh, Luckily I have a one real short day at the end, I might be able to split this up a little better. But uh, this Sanders draft where I camped last night is just really roaring. Rain came down really hard and really filled this stream up. Uh, my tent held up pretty well, but I did get a few raindrops inside, but not too bad. i just hoping, hoping the weather is like they say it is. It's going to get nice here the rest of the week and hopefully give me a chance to dry a few things out. So. Just walking up along this stream and getting to the top, hopefully hit Arch Springs in the next hour and then cross Hoover Road and towards the old Cinema Honing Trail and then down into Cinema Honing by the end of the day. Uh, I'm hoping to maybe get up to the top of the ridge on Ellicott Run, but uh, we'll see. Well, I am nearing the top of Upper Pine Draft where the Quihanna Trail intersects with the old Cinema Honing Path. And, uh, Say that today has been a challenge is an understatement. It's been basically raining moderately pretty much the entire day. I have wet feet and every piece of clothing I have is wet even though I have a rain jacket on and uh, I'm very tired. I was hoping to make it all the way to cinema honing at minimum if not past and I got a late start because of the rain and the rain delayed me and uh, it just doesn't seem like it's gonna happen so 
not liking it. I don't know where we'll camp, but probably looking for one here fairly soon. So we're now coming up on the point at which we'll say goodbye to the Quihanna Trail and going to the Old Cinema Honing Trail. You see the sign up here. It says it's an old log road of some kind. I hope it's a nice log road that's easy to follow, but I was told it might not be that easy. So here we are. Old Cinema Honing Trail. The Quihanna turns right. See the orange blaze there. Three runs is 2.9 miles. Jerry run 4.4 miles. I'm going this way toward Cinema Honing. So, so far, looks pretty good right here. Hopefully this is what it's, what it's like the whole way, but I have some doubts. I just uh, video here a little bit longer on this. Nice and grassed out, which, oh man, is very nice. The way that, uh, with how wet it's been today, my feet are soggy. I'm just really hoping to be able to dry my boots a little bit tonight. And then expect my feet will probably be wet all day tomorrow. And then maybe just gradually get them a little drier every day because i got a long ways to go, so. I'll turn this off here and see where i got to go. Working my way down the old Cinema Honing Trail here this morning. Uh, it seems like it's an old road or railroad, I'm not sure. Uh, but it's real foggy. After the rain, I can see blue skies poking up. But uh, still real wet out, so my, a lot of my stuff is wet. My, a lot of clothing is wet, my boots are wet. Hoping that I can get a chance to dry them out here. I'm hoping that restaurant at the bottom of the hill here is open so I can stop in and get some breakfast and uh, maybe use the restroom, dry my stuff out just a little bit, get some towels and stuff. But worst case, I'm going to uh, Kettle Creek State Park tonight. A friend of mine is coming to meet me. Um, he's actually gonna bring me a battery pack since mine didn't make it for whatever reason. I went from three bars to totally dead last night. And obviously, I need my phone for a lot of things, so he's he's very, very nicely going to bring me a battery pack. So just working my way down this foggy hill. I'm hoping this is kind of what it looks like, but I don't have, <laughs> based on my trip so far, I have a sense that that may not end up being the case, but we'll see. Beautiful morning. Just climbing this really, really long grade from Jericho up to the top of Ellicott Run. I'm going to say it's probably 1,400 feet over a couple miles. It's not real steep, but it is a long, long, long walk up this hill. Uh, I may not have any higher elevation gains this entire trip. Um, now, it won't be, it'll, I'll have steeper trails, but probably nothing that I have to go further up so just making my way up here slowly and steadily just once I hit the top I'll get some flat walking on a road and then uh, drop down over the hill back up to the top down to Cook's Run then back up to the Kettle Creek Vista and down to Kettle Creek Campground for the night so hopefully make it there by 6 6 30 is the goal so so I just came up a really, really steep hill from Cook's Run up to the top. I talked to a couple of really nice guys at a camp down there. They offered me some water from their well. It was very cold and much, much faster than the way that I've been getting water. So thank God for that. Uh, I am just about at the Kettle Creek Vista. And then I've got a downhill down into the park where I guess hopefully I'll be able to get a, a, a camping site and uh, a shower and some other stuff. So really looking forward to that, but I'm gonna enjoy this nice view first. So last night I stayed at the Kettle Creek State Park, which uh, was not very nice. It was really good to get a good hot shower. I got a couple pieces of clothing dried out real nice. So I'll have them for the rest of the trip. Um, did cost me a little bit of money, but you know, that's the price you pay. 
So um, this morning I'm climbing up away from the park. That's downhill and we're facing uphill. Summerson Run is down below. You can't really see it, but you might be able to hear it. Um, I'm hoping to make it past 144 today and maybe another six, seven miles past that. That'd be about a 19 mile day. Uh, I'm pretty much resigned at this point that unless something changes significantly, I don't know that I'm going to be able to finish this thing in six days, even with a real long last day. So um, just guessing on trail miles and estimates, I'm, I'm thinking that um, this trail was estimated to be 170. I estimated it to be about 180. It's probably going to be more like 190 on my GPS, maybe even longer. So we'll see. But um, feeling pretty decent today so far. I got my boots really nice and dry and got some uh, blister pads on my feet. And uh, just really thankful. A friend of mine brought me a spare battery pack last night, so I should have cell phone uh, charge for the rest of this trip. So really looking forward to that. Made it up to the top of Summerson Run. And I've been on this little bit flatter terrain for the last couple of miles, maybe mile and a half now. We're coming around this ridge. There's a lot of laurel again, a lot of oak trees and some, you can kind of see them through the woods there. There's a better one right here. Some of these decent sized rocks, not huge, but decent. Add a little character. Hoping here I should be heading down towards the fire tower before too long. I know the fire tower is somewhere here. I'm thinking maybe over five miles in front of me. Hoping to make it there by, I don't know, one, maybe. Got my cash on the other side to pick up my food. And then hopefully make make it a ways into the down or the uh, towards the Susquehanna Trail before dark. So lots of rocks to walk over. Makes it hard to get your footing sometimes and especially when you're a little bit blistery. I'm gonna have to do a better job of taping stuff up tonight. It's nice to have dry feet though. So I just passed the Tamarack Fire Tower. Kind of disappointingly, it was locked up by the DCNR, so I couldn't actually go up and take any photos, which stings because it would have been a beautiful day. And now I'm crossing this pipeline corridor and heading down toward 144, where I have my stuff cached. Hopefully nothing messed with it, and I can pick my stuff up. I'm kind of dreading adding all that extra weight back into my pack because it's finally down to a pretty manageable light weight now but what can you do so I had a good chance to sit up there at the tower and cook some lunch and ended up getting some much needed drying for for my gear all my tent and everything I, I got it all really nice and dried out so so that was really good so as so long as it stays nice for the next few days which I think is supposed to at least today tomorrow and Friday should be in pretty good shape Working my way up the donut hole trail here. Seems like I've been going uphill a lot with a few intermittent times of of uh, flat, but a lot of uphill. I think I think I may end up making it to the Kearney Branch tonight. Whatever that actually ends up meaning, but. Um, that's my hope, is I can make it down there and camp for the night. So, a lot and a lot of spider webs here. Tons of spiders. I mean, I would guess I probably run through a hundred spider webs every mile, which is pretty annoying. But, beautiful understory up here. Mostly sassafras, that bright yellow, and sometimes orange and red. Very pretty. Very pretty. So I made it here to this Scoville Branch Shelter. It's got a nice little campsite there with some sitting spots. Uh, Susquehanna Trail Club made this. It's got a nice 
Adirondack shelter. Would have been nice to make it to here last night, but it was about five miles from where I was getting started. So if I'd have made it been lucky, I'd have gotten there by, oh, you know, midnight-ish. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's a nice day. The only downside so far is the trail has been pretty wet and I don't like that too much, but what can you do? So just working away here, just hoping to make it to the end of this trail by dark. So we'll see. It's 10.30. So I'm working my way down to Green Lake Run here. Uh, pretty nice trail for a lot of this now. The beginning of the trail kind of stunk, but once I got past the Scoville Branch shelter, things seemed to really improve quite a bit. So um, A little bit of side hilling, but there's also a lot of real nice trail I don't know, built back in the day maintained relatively well it looks like somebody comes through with a mower at least once so you can see some fall colors out here a lot of the maples are turning red and orange and yellow it's just it's very pretty right now so still I think I got down to Green Lake back up back down to the um, I think it's the, called the left branch or maybe the right branch of Young Woman's Creek and I'll go up Morgan Hollow and then I am going to be off the STS. So after that, I'll just be on the DHT for the rest of the day, most likely. And then we'll see where I'm at tomorrow. So still a faint chance that I'll get this done in the next four days. I'd really like to, but it would probably involve some pretty big days. And it may just be easier just to say I'm going to take that extra one and go ahead and do it then. But... Anyway, well, just plodding along. So I'm working my way up something called Bobsled Hollow, and you can probably guess why it's called that. Well, I don't know if they actually had a bobsled run, but pretty certain that they could, if you can see just how steep this is. Cameras never do it really any justice, but it's a pretty, pretty steep little hill here, and uh, I'm working my way up it, and I think it's only gonna get steeper before it gets shallower. Um, pretty though it's beautiful it's beautiful country out here very very big woods you can see why all the hunters would want to be out here of course I wouldn't want to really drag one back to my house from there but uh, all in all I guess could be doing worse things on a day like today so um, just got to work my way up to the top of this hill then back down to the right branch of Young Woman's Creek and then I believe then it's Morgan Hollow and then I'll leave the STS. So I think it's about, oh, I'm honestly not sure. Um, I'm guessing around somewhere around seven, eight miles to get from that point to the turn for the T squared trail. And I'm hoping to maybe make it there today um, or just make it as far as I can. That's That'd be the goal. So we'll see. I just came down off the hill, took a break, talked to a very nice gentleman from actually near where I'm from, named Gary. He had his dog with him, and uh, he was out backpacking the Susquehannock Trail. So hopefully he was very blessed in his time hiking this trail. He and his dog both said his dog was 11, and it was the very first backpacking trip. So kind of neat. <laughs> But uh, I am about to head up over Morgan Hollow, which I'm told is the steepest section of the Susquehannock Trail. So if it's steeper than that last climb, it's gonna be a real brute. I had kind of set a goal to make it to the top of Morgan Hollow by four. And uh, I got to the camp site down at the bottom here pretty early, so I was, uh, well within pace, but I talked to him for quite a while, but that doesn't hurt anything. It's one of the things, human interaction is something, certainly something I've been <laughs> lacking lately, so uh, it was nice, nice chatting with him and being encouraged because I was feeling a little bit down. My knee is kind of bothering me and really am not liking it and really wasn't looking forward to this climb, but hopefully... This one will be 
at least manageable. And I can get to the top in the time that I want and then make my way up to find a campsite somewhere where the donut hole trail splits back off. So hopefully that's how it works. Uh, I just made it to the top of Morgan Hollow. Uh, almost done with the donut hole trail. That was a very brutal climb. <laughs> I guess uh, the people who made these trails have never heard of switchbacks, although there were a few small ones as we got towards the top. So, uh, this I'm kind of on the flat now. I'm still on a little bit of an incline. Got a little bit more to go, but uh, not a ton. And then looking forward to hitting hitting the intersection and leaving the Susquehanna Trail. I've already finished. I was thinking about it earlier. I finished the Quihanna and. Um, all the side connector trails that go along with it and very soon I'll be done with the old the uh, Susquehanna trail and then before long by hopefully by tomorrow morning I'll be done with the donut hole trail too so then I'll just have the T-square the Black Forest uh, the Long Branch West Rim and the Mid-State left to go so uh, getting there I'm over 100 miles now and uh, just steaming my way toward camp it's about uh I think it's maybe like 4.15 or so, and I should hopefully make it a few miles into the section of the donut hole before I have to set up. So I came down the Bull Run Trail, which was really about the poorest section of trail that I've hiked on so far. It was super brushy. It was really not in good shape. Very poorly maintained. Uh, not pleasing. <laughs> and uh, I ended up... I thought maybe I would camp down where the trail came out by Young Woman's Creek. Uh, I saw that there was a, a camp with a car at it, so I went over and knocked on the door and a couple came to the door and said, uh, thankfully they seemed to know quite a lot about the trails here, which was really nice. So uh, they pointed me, said you could go up and go to something called Long Something Bridge. Maybe Long Caribbean Bridge. <laughs> uh, cross over and there was a couple nice campsites right there. So, which that's good because I don't think I have the energy to make it to the top of the hill tonight. I'm still going to be probably three miles or better shy of the it junction uh, with the T Square Trail when I get up tomorrow, but at least I'll be on my way so I'm uh, looking forward to getting some food in me getting a little rest and hopefully getting to sleep early so I can get up kind of early and get moving so it's a pretty little valley here not sure what this stream is called exactly seven mile run maybe since this is a seven mile run road but um, a little bit of a road walk and then trail kicks to the right before it goes up the mountain so uh, all in all, this donut hole trail has been very, very difficult. I would definitely say well more difficult than Quihanna, especially the way that I went on it. And uh, I've never hiked more than little pieces of the Black Forest Trail, so I guess we'll find out about that. But I can tell you that my money right now is probably on the donut hole being tougher. At least I really hope it is. So. Anyway, should get to camp here real soon, and it's getting close to dark, so I need to. So, signing off for the night. So I broke camp about 20 minutes ago, and I've been heading up this real small side stream to Seven Mile Hollow. I saw up there in that laurel and bushes and stuff, uh, just saw a couple of deer, one of which was a nice buck. Um, couldn't get a real good look, but he looked like a decent sized deer, maybe an eight point, maybe bigger, but uh, nice nice sight this morning. First buck I've seen on this trip, everything else has been does, and even little ones, but it's a pretty steep hill. I've got to head up here and then keep going until uh, I hit the top. I think I'm probably got about another 300, two, 300 feet of elevation to go, and then uh, I won't have any more uphills on the donut hole trail, and then I'll be hitting the T-squared trail, going to the top, and then basically it's plateau walking, I think, for about uh, five, six miles till I connect with the Black Forest Trail. So uh, just really looking forward to some easier walking for a little bit. 
affiliate the Black Forest. Uh, the plan today is to go down into Callahan Run and then uh, hopefully up Callahan Run, up the ridge, and then back down to Naval Hollow and hopefully camp there. So um, that would put me on pace to have some, some fairly good, <clears throat> fairly nice days. I to be able to get the fishing pole out at, on uh, Callahan or Naval Hollow and uh, maybe see if I can catch a couple brook trout. But I haven't had any chance to do that yet because I feel like I've been having to push so hard. So uh, I'd really like being able to do that. So we'll see, but that's the plan. Well, I made it to the top of Seven Mile and now I'm on this kind of road looking thing that's pretty well brushed back. So uh, this is very pleasant walking right now, kind of flat. And, back in the laurel and a lot of hemlock and pines and some birch and it's just a pretty area so um, a lot of diversity so far on this trail from a lot of high areas that are dry like this to swampy areas to rocks to a lot of a lot of stuff so getting near to where I should be turning onto the short road that will take me to the uh, the turn and then I should be about six six seven miles from the Black Forest Trail so so far this morning kind of slow but I'm hoping to uh, make good time here on the flat and get to where I need to go for the night so I'm headed down the Cougar Run Trail here I am very nearly to the end of the Donut Hole Trail yay uh, oddly, this is maybe the best trail this has been the entire time. This is a real pretty valley. Got some water up there. It's uh, lots of hemlocks and beach. It's very beautiful. It heads directly east, so this lighting's not the best. <laughs> Seems like most hikes in the, here in the morning, it's not good lighting, and in the afternoon, it's good lighting. But... Uh, yeah, I'll have to pay attention here because I know the T-squared trail kicks off at some point. I've never hiked this section, but it is a very pleasant and enjoyable end with the creek here to my right and uh, a nice cool valley. But with the sunshine shining in here, nice little trout hole right down there. Probably a trout in it. I don't know. I haven't haven't looked, but wouldn't be surprised if there was. So. I'm hoping with my shorter schedule I might be able to get out the fishing pole a little bit, maybe tonight even, depending on where I'm at and how I'm doing. And uh, find a way to do a little bit of fishing before I'm done here. So anyway, just uh, I'm going to be paying close attention here soon to find out where the T-Square Trail is. So just a, a great day. Praise be to God for keeping me safe so far and getting a chance to talk to my parents a little this morning. Just uh, a real pleasant and beautiful day, and I'm just looking forward to seeing some more beauty. So, I'm on my way up the T squared trail. These people know what switchbacks are, which is very nice. So, I just came around one, and I'm going up another. So, I'm getting nearer to the top. I think eventually I'll just go straight up the valley here in this creek valley, but. Um, lots of stones, even almost talus in a few places. Uh, very kind of, very neat, but they've done a nice job of keeping this trail not too crazy steep so far. So that is very pleasant. So I should be at the top, and once I hit the top, it's pretty flat, I think, all the way to Baldwin Run, which is where the Black Forest Trail connects in. So I'm going to take off my gaiters and my long sleeve shirt and start getting things dry in a little bit and uh, maybe take a drink of water and keep moving up this hill. So I'm up here on top of the T-squared trail. It's mostly flat, a little bit up and down here and there, but just fantastic trail. You can see how far out it's cut. It's like they came through here with a mower or something and, and cut it back. Well, maybe they did, maybe one of those DR mowers. You know, the North Country Trail back home does the same thing, but just really nice trail. It's a beautiful day right now. You can see the sun is just shining. And uh, not hear any birds chirping, but leaves are all changing. You can see the yellows, some oranges and reds. It's just, it's just a really nice day to be out. I hear there's a chance of rain tomorrow. Really praying that that's not going to happen. Uh, but even if it does, it sounds like it should be over 
I think relatively early in the day, I think is what they said, or it starts later in the day. I don't, I don't remember which, but anyway, um, right now just kind of enjoying this trail and I've got, uh, I'm guessing probably around four miles left to the Black Forest Trail. It's about 11 o'clock, so hoping to make it there by one and uh, maybe even get a chance to stop if I can find a nice flat spot to stop and cook up a lunch a little bit and eat some of my spaghetti or something. I know I've got, I think five, six, I think I have six meals left. So, uh, and I've got five days left, but I'm gonna be going past three restaurants. So I'm hoping to stop at each one of those or at least the first two minimum. And so I should be able to get away without using a, a dinner that night. So I can probably eat a lunch and a dinner today, which is good because I'm a little short on some of my other supplies. I do have some extra stuff, but you really would like to eat quite a bit. And I feel like I've been kind of shorted the last few days, so I might be a little more tired than I would otherwise be. But anyway, just a little glimpse here of what the T-squared trail is like. And like I said, it is really still hiking on the T-squared trail. It's about 10 of two. So I should be on the Black Forest trail shortly after two. I don't know exactly what that means for me for tonight as far as how far I'll make it, but I have some hope that I might be able to still make it to Naval Run. I don't know if there's any campsites between Callahan and Naval. It's about four miles between those two, so uh, just kind of hoping that I can make it there, I guess. Keep up a decent pace. See the understory here is beautiful. A lot of oaks in the overstory, but a lot of sassafras in the understory. There's just beautiful reds and oranges. It's very nice walking on this trail right now. So just plugging away should be at the Black Forest. You can see the sign up there. I am have left the T-squared trail and I am connected into the Black Forest Trail, which comes in right down here and then goes right up this hill right here. So Pretty steep hill to start with. I remember it from hiking it before. Yeah, it's pretty steep, but not terrible. Well, I think the other side coming down is a lot steeper, hopefully, anyway. So, um, I guess they called this the Black Forest because back in the day, prior to all the logging, uh, they said that the forest was so thick with white pine and hemlock that the sunlight never hit the forest floor. So, uh, if you can imagine uh, how much wood that they pulled out of these woods you know, these are uh, secondary forests, these hardwoods. It was mostly coniferous trees before that. So pretty neat area and really looking forward to this section. It's going to be pretty rugged, but I have a feeling it'll be pretty worth it. So I'm on the Black Forest Trail now and I'm working my way kind of generally across the plateau, sort of paralleling Route 44. I'm probably I don't know, maybe a couple miles away from Callahan Run. And we'll see how things go when I get there. I'm hoping to make Callahan and then shoot up over the top and get down to Naval before it gets dark camp, but that may be tricky. So we'll see. Um, I just met a guy a little bit ago named Mike who he had a dog named Barely, <laughs> and they were hoping to make it to Naval Run too. He said that's kind of his bailout point if he gets to where he thinks he needs to bail out and go back to his car. He's only a couple miles away, so uh, we'll see. I don't, I don't know what's what the site's like there. If it's a big site, small site, a bunch of sites, um, hard to say. And I guess we'll find out when we get there. So hopefully. Get down to Callahan here, get some water. I'm not going to fill both my bottles. You know, hopefully that'll last me until I get up over the mountain and back down to Naval for, for camp for the night. So, beautiful sun. So I just came up from the bottom of Callahan Run. Uh, surprisingly, it wasn't anywhere near as bad as I actually thought it would end up being. It's, uh, I mean, it's a hill, but it's nothing incredible. I mean, there's still a little bit more to it. The trail turns to the right. You can see the blaze right here. It goes up on the hill, and then there's another hump, and then another hill, 
and then it drops down into Naval Hollow, uh, which is basically right over there. You can kind of see it. But uh, I decided to just go ahead and camp here tonight. It's about 25 after 6. There's a campsite here. You can see some of my stuff hanging. But uh, there's something called the Cutoff Trail that goes back over toward 44. There's a nice little fire ring and stuff. I think I may actually, for the first time on this trip, get a little fire started. I got some fire starters and paper, so hopefully I uh, can find some decent little wood to get going and have a little fire and, and uh, hopefully dry some of my stuff just a little bit because I think that might might help. So anyway, just going to do that and get my dinner ready and uh, hopefully have a, a good evening here. Get up early and maybe make it to Slate Run tomorrow, get some get some good grub for a change, and then get up on the hill and, and kind of start the process of finishing up this trip in the last two and a half days. So These are the times that you come out here for. This is pretty perfect. You can see up and I can see the stars, listen to the fire. It's a much warmer night than the last bunch of them have been, and so I think it uh, shouldn't be so bad trying to get some some rest tonight. I won't probably won't have to bundle up quite as much. So I'm just gonna sit out here and enjoy the fire for a little while longer. Got my boots drying off on the other side. You can't see them, but just really <clears throat> enjoying this evening and feeling pretty solid because I didn't do a whole lot of miles today, so got quite a bit of rest. I think I did about 16 and a half, give or take. So I'm gonna let this fire die down a little bit and, and get some sleep. So I got up this morning and making my way down a little valley and up another one. Got moving about 25 after 7, so earlier than most every day so far. But I'm up to this first spot. There's a vista. One facing this way and one facing this way. That there is Naval Run, which I'm going to be dropping down into, I believe. Maybe that's the other side of Callahan, actually. But this is definitely Callahan over here. That's where I came up out of last night. Came up from that little little hole you can see there, kind of uh, a dip in the top down that valley and then back up the other side. So I'm going to be heading down into Naval Run and then back up the other side. So sounds like there's more views than maybe a water. So I have now made it to, I think it's a point that before you drop down into Naval Hollow and you can see just how rugged this terrain is. It's very beautiful though gorge down there and uh, it turns out there was a campsite here I wish I I thought there might have been but I probably should have pushed on to here last night and stayed here and I'd have been a lot closer to the restaurant but I guess it is what it is so just wow lord what a what a sight that yeah, was uh, quite the creation you can actually see the creek if you look way down there you can you can see it and uh, it's the fog down there shrouding the valley and oh, it's just beautiful. So I'm gonna head down over this hill I think pretty soon. 
might be one more vista before I go and then so I came down into Naval Run here it was a very steep hill and uh, I'm uh, on this old rail grade or road whichever one it is it's very nice open terrain it started to rain a little bit hoping that it doesn't get any worse than this or I may have to stop and put rain gear on I am going to need to get some water here from the stream whenever we do finally cross but uh, kind of enjoying this flat for right now so uh, I met a guy from Philly he was going up the hill he told me that uh, pretty good view halfway up the trail coming up and uh, so I can kind of look forward to that but uh, that was a very steep hill coming down and good lots of switchbacks though thankfully so that's at least is one positive so just uh, working my way down here so so most of the way out of Naval Hollow the rain came and then I think it died down again really hoping it doesn't rain again so I'm up here it says his sign says Pine Creek Half Dome the highest direct rise creek to rim in Pine Creek Gorge relief 1360 elevation 2060 so 1360 feet and there's the dome right there so it's pretty beautiful uh, I think I came that's in between those two valleys of Callahan Run I think so I uh, am almost to the top there's something called the gas line trail which I'm a little nervous about as wet as it is my feet are dry currently but the feeling if I got to walk through any grass it's gonna be pretty nasty so not looking forward to that but hopefully I can get my feet dried out at some point today or tonight and you know have the next two days of dry so the top of this ridge is really beautiful you can get kind of views through the trees of the other hillsides on either side it's just a really nice spot the trails good free of grass mostly hopefully it stays that way because I really don't want to get my feet wet or any wetter than they already go, are going to be so just working my way along here and seeing where where I can get to. Like I said, I'm hoping, praying to get to the restaurant by four. I don't know how far that leaves me right now. I'm gonna have to check my maps whenever I find another good viewpoint or whatever to, to mark them by, but I'm guessing I got around 10 miles, maybe, left to go. And it's uh, like 10, 20, so I've got about five and a half, six hours to get there. Hopefully I can do it, we'll see. So the nice so the nice thing about this trail is that when you get to the top of hills you really get rewarded unlike the donut hole trail so this is Pine Creek Gorge I guess I must be looking up to the northeast um, it's beautiful <laughs> I really did a number here this goes over there goes over there back up here Sign, Pine Creek Gorge. <laughs> no kidding. Man, is it beautiful. I don't know how much further I have to go here, but this is uh, certainly worth that hike up, and hopefully I can make some good time now that I should be more plateau for a little bit and drop into these valleys. Um, just really, really pretty day. So I thought I was doing pretty well. I got up to a, a register, and... Uh, I didn't really have very good directions on which way to go. I made the wrong turn and walked a couple hundred yards and figured I couldn't be on the right trail, so I had to turn back around and backtrack. But I uh, thought I was doing really well. I thought I was like mile 34.4, thinking I've got about eight and a half miles into Slate Run and uh, some good food. And I look at my map and turn out. I am wrong. I've got another about a mile to get to that point. So nine and a half miles, it's after 11. My goal was four o'clock. Uh, it's looking a little iffy now, 4.30. I, if I can do it by 4.30, I may stop. If it's after 4.30, I may just shoot up the hill. I don't want to do that because I'm just really looking forward to getting some real food, but when you're slow, you're slow. I've also started about every day at some point in the day 
I end up with my left hamstring starts to lock up and get real stiff and real sore. It makes it really hard to walk. Not really uphill or downhill, it's just on flat ground. And right now I'm on this really nice flat ground, which normally is good because you can walk really fast, but right now it's kind of miser misery, so I'm uh, not really comfortable walking right now. I may have to stop and take some ibuprofen or something, uh, try and get my muscle unlocked a little bit, eat some food and stuff, but I'm uh, going to try to keep moving here and make it to where I want, need to go. So, so I came down over a little slate run, which I think so far it's pretty close between that and Honey Run on the Dunna Old Trail, which is the worst descent. This one probably wins because in the middle of the descent, all of a sudden you had to go way up back up on the hill again. So I'd say that probably wins. So now I'm heading back up. And it looks like this should probably be the worst climb as far as height that I'll have. Um, at least till I get to the to Slate Run. So about seven miles from Slate Run. And uh, you see the little Slate Run Creek down there. I'm on an old rail grade it looks like and working my way up. Hopefully you can make decent time up here and find a way to get up here before too long and then work my way along the plateau and then back down one more creek bed and then back up again to the top of the hill and then down to Slate Run. So that's the goal. Still, it's about 1230. I don't know if I'll make it by four, but I'm hoping to still. So about seven miles, something like that. So I'm working my way across the plateau here before I drop down into the last hollow that I will have to come up out of until I hit Slate Run. So since it's kind of flat, I figured it'd be a good time to shoot a video. It's, uh, it's really quite nice. So I'm about ready to head down into the last valley that I'll head into and then back out of before I get to Slate Run. Once I get down through this valley and back up the other side, it'll be pretty much just downhill all the way into Slate Run. So, and it's about 140-ish, something like that. So it means I got about two hours and 20 minutes to get there before my self-imposed goal of four o'clock. Because if it's there, if I get there at four, get some food, figure that takes about an hour. It'll leave me about five o'clock and then I can just hopefully work my way to the top of the hill. Maybe get to the end of the Black Forest section before it gets dark. So that'd be about three and a half miles from there. Three, three and a half miles. So. So that's the goal, and working my way along. Hopefully this video is not too hard to follow because it just sure seems like it's kind of herky-jerky, but we'll see when I upload it. Coming down the spine of this hill into Slate Run, you've got a few neat rock formations, but it is an extremely steep hill. <laughs> I kind of feel like Frodo and Sam, when Gollum was leading them in back way into Mordor, if you've watched those movies before. That real steep, windy, twisty hill with a lot of stones. That's pretty much what this is like. I don't know, I can't film for very long because it's going to be tricky to keep my footing either way. So I'm going to stop for a second and just kind of giving you an idea of what the hill is like. It drops off way down this way, drops off way down this way. And the restaurant's down at the bottom of the hill, down the flat for a ways, and hopefully won't be busy and I can get just, just a quick video to show you with this viewpoint that I came to it's a basically about a 270 degree view across the slate run gorge just incredibly stunning and I don't have a lot of time to sit here and take video but man that's a very very tough climb down and I'm looking forward to getting the bottom so I'm following this old railroad grade down along Slate Run, the creek's down maybe 
I don't know, 60 feet, 80 feet below me. And uh, just following this, it should take me right down in behind the restaurant. And then hopefully I can drop my sticks and a couple other things and head in to grab something to eat because I am starving. I am freaking hungry. So uh, I'm not sure what I'll eat, see what they got. I'm thinking a cheeseburger or something like that, but we'll see. Just, uh, just about down there. I think maybe I should be within three quarters to a half a mile. So pretty neat feature here. Coming up through this old stone quarry. These real tall rocks. There's a campsite right over there. There's another one out there with a little bit of a view. Not the greatest, but... And just work your way up through these big rock formations. Really neat. Neat area. I'm here at this vista. And I just wanted to just give a view of what this is like. This trail is just unbelievably gorgeous. God. Did quite the work up here. Just beautiful bright trees up here. Just cool grass. This view down over the slate run gorge. Not only that, but you walk up this way, the way I just came from here. I'm actually I'm actually walking this way. I walked in here and took a few photos. But you keep walking. And not only that, you get a second view for the price of one. So just absolutely gorgeous. I actually came down through some of these valleys. That's Slate Run Road. You can kind of see it faintly down there in the middle. But this is probably the last vista for tonight. Still hoping to get a little further, but we'll see. Um, Good morning, so I'm on the trail again. I've got about 0.7 miles to go on the Black Forest Trail, and then I'll hit the Al Green Trail, which is a short little spur that leads to other trails as part of a longer trail called the Long Branch Trail. That should take me to the West Rim Trail. So, last night was brutal. It was cold. I had a tooth start aching for some unknown reason that had an ache in a couple of months and uh, it was pretty disappointing I didn't sleep well I might have gotten four or five five hours total sleep maybe at the most um, there was a nice spring there so I didn't have to filter any water this morning which was really nice and today should be an easier day I think I'll just have one drop down into Cedar Run, one climb up the, uh, the Long Branch, one drop down into Blackwell, and then one climb back up to the top of my campsite tonight. So that's the plan. We'll see how things go. I'm hoping the little store in Blackwell's open and that uh, my tooth doesn't bother me tonight. I'm hoping that's a little bit warmer. It was 35 according to my thermometer and I checked had a little bit of cell service I checked all the local weather stations on weather underground and Most of them were at anywhere from 28 to 31. So maybe on the hill. It was slightly warmer Maybe but it was right around freezing. So I didn't have any frozen water, but then again I was under the tent. So it was, it was pretty cold I'm just going to keep walking here and hopefully hit the Al Green Trail soon. So, I am now at the end of the, the section of the Black Forest Trail that I'll be hiking. And uh, I'm taking this one to the right here, the Al Green Trail. I had to look this up at one point. Apparently Al Greens were essentially log thieves. They would go into the areas where the loggers were cutting logs and moving them to down the creeks and splash dams to try and move them to market and then they would 
uh, basically steal them and sell them themselves. So, <laughs> uh, kind of a low practice, but I guess apparently it must have been common enough that they started naming trails after them. So, uh, leaving the Black Forest, I think probably be unusual to see anybody here in the next, well, at least just about a day. Maybe when I hit the West Rim, I might see a person or two, but it's like it'd be a pretty desolate section. I saw a lot of people here on on the uh, Black Forest. So it's a real popular weekend, and for good reason. It was beautiful. So, so far, this Algarine Long Branch Trail has been very rolling. Really, very rarely do you go up more than 20 or 30 feet at a time. I know it will drop down eventually into Cedar Run and then back up the other side where I'm sure it'll be quite a lot steeper. But at this point, it's, uh, it's a pretty good trail. I'm enjoying the walk. Nope, you see here on the side, it has changed from yellow blazes to red blazes. So not sure exactly why that is. I know normally walking trails are yellow. Red are usually horse and people. But uh, I don't know if I'll see a horse or not. But, but right now it's nice wide walking. Real nice and easy. So should be getting to where I start moving over towards Cedar Run here pretty quickly. I would think I've been walking for about an hour, maybe an hour and a half this morning. And it's warming up slightly, but it's still not exactly warm. Seen quite a bit of frost on some of those areas back a little ways. And uh, I think I think that number in the low 30s probably was pretty accurate. So hopefully not so cold tonight. I'm hoping it'll be more like 45. So I'm in this valley now, Long Branch it's called. And it's a very steep sided valley and there's a nice little waterfall there maybe 15 feet tall and then it's just a series of cascades kind of running down through can't really see them real good but the trail is over there on the right and that side but real pretty area making my way up to the top I should be about three miles from the west rim so I'm hoping to make it there for too long maybe by 12 12 30 so coming down this little hill here and I'm reaching the end of the long branch trail which took me from the Black Forest Trail to my current location, which is, that's the sign. That way it goes down toward Blackwell. And this trail right here is the West Rim Trail, which I'll be taking for about two miles, a little over two miles, and then to the West Rim Connector and down into Blackwell. So. I'm making okay time today. It's a little slow coming up out of Long Branch, but that's a very steep hill. So I should make decent more time again here on the plateau and then a long downhill that will take me into Blackwell where hopefully I can get some food. So looking to looking forward to that. This is the one view of on the Westrum Trail. You're looking down over Blackwell. There's the bridge down there in the parking lot. And then the Mid-State Trail will cut up the valley again. The connector goes down the valley away from us and then the uh, main trail itself actually comes back up the valley toward us and back up to the left as you're looking at it. So I'm gonna be heading over here to the next valley then down around and then back up again. So quite the circuitous route. So I just came down this trail and I'm at this sign, which is that Bowen Trail, heads to Blackwell, and that's the trail I'm going to take. A few weeks ago, when I hiked down to Little Pine Park that's on that map, that's where I camped. It was uh, not the greatest campsite. It's a little bit, a little bit um, angled, but it could have been worse. So, but uh, yeah, there's uh, there's the trail. I'm not going to Little Pine. I'm actually going up the other way this time, but that's the way I went last time was the Little Pine, so got a bit of a hill it's about 130 I believe, 140 and it'd be nice to get to Blackwell by 3 so you can see the top there of Cherry Run Falls it's a pretty good little plunge uh, there's a trail that goes down there I'm very tired, very hungry 
and frankly the falls are barely flowing so um, not going to go down there. There was another one back a little ways on Bowen Run that was at least as high, maybe higher. Had a little more water flowing, but it was. It had a really long trail going down to it, and I just didn't have the time or energy to do it. So, getting pretty tired. I got another, another mile or so, I think, out to 414 into Blackwell, and then hopefully I'll be grabbing some grub and then working my way back up the mid-state trail so well it's at the kind of at the end of the tunnel here now it's getting nice out beautiful actually but uh, it's in the last oh I don't know 30 miles ish of trail after I've done 160 so I'm um, quite a ways into it and uh, it's just it's beautiful, it's gorgeous, but sometimes you get a little weary. <laughs> and uh, I wouldn't mind finishing tomorrow if I could, but so anyway, back we go up the hill a little bit here and see where this leads us through more laurel. Walking across Pine Creek here into Blackwell, should be a lot of fun. Lots of cars coming, so that's always nice. I should be turning here shortly making my way up to the Midstate Trail, so. So I ate some dinner at the Miller's store, or Miller's General store there in Blackwell. Got some pizza, some goldfish crackers, some birch beer and orange juice, and I don't remember if I got anything else, but uh, I was pretty hungry. So it's put a little dent in my hunger at least, so. I am making my way up this hill, Stone Quarry Run. Uh, Stone Quarry Run is down there. And this is the hill up above me. Uh, it's the last big hill I should have the rest of today. Um, I'm daydreaming ways that I might be able to finish this trail tomorrow. <laughs> uh, so I don't have to, you know, spend another night tomorrow night out, out here. It's going to be very cold uh, again tomorrow night. so. Be nice to be home in my own bed. So we'll see if I can figure something out for tomorrow. But right now I'm going to keep climbing, see how far I can get up this hill. I think I'm, I might be halfway, maybe at this point. I know this is a shorter hillside on this side than the, than the other side, so that's a positive. But I think it's going to be a pretty, pretty solid climb. So hopefully I can get up here and get another three miles in or so before dark and camp somewhere near the water water tank run I think it's called one of the branches of water tank run so that's the plan we'll, we'll see so I ran into two guys at the bottom of the hill who had I'd met on the other side of the river they said they had climbed the climbed across the creek and they were climbing up here to see some waterfalls but I don't think there's any water up here so uh, they did say that the trail looks very Tolkien-esque to which I agreed and said that I had said the same thing yesterday. So I'm sure my friend Josh will appreciate that. It's There are very many places here that remind me of the entryway into Mordor. So, and as we know, um, one does not simply walk to Mordor. So uh, I guess it might be <laughs> fitting that uh, I am trying to walk and failing right now because my leg hurts. And I'm very tired and I'm just trying to digest food. So I'm going to shut this off and see. So I'm up here on the Mid-State Trail. Made it up the Stone Quarry Run. It was a pretty good climb. Mostly, I think, just because I was so tired from pushing so hard to get to Blackwell on time. I uh, think that was probably the fastest pace I had on any section so far on this trail, with the exception of maybe the first day. But... I was really, really pushing hard to make it, so right now I'm working my way around the hillside. I know there's a place where I could turn and go to a vista, but I think in order to get to camp on time, I just, I don't think I'm going to be able to do that, so right now I'm just trying to push to get to the camp at 10 miles, which is that water tank run, and hoping that it's a nice site that I can get set up in pretty quickly. And hopefully it's not too far into the valley or anything because 
that's uh, just a big downer to me because I think it's gonna get cold again tonight. Sun's still up, but you can't see it well. It's almost like it's twilight, like it's behind clouds or something. So, so maybe the clouds will make it stay a little bit warmer tonight. I don't, I really don't know, but we'll see. So, this trail is definitely not quite as well maintained as the other section of Midstate I was on before, which was immaculate. Maybe the best section of trail I've ever seen. Um, it's also probably not quite as good as the West Rim or the Black. Uh, Black Forest Trail definitely would be a step up from the <laughs> donut hole for sure. And as far as the uh, Quihanna goes, it's probably similar. Maybe maybe the Quihanna might be a little bit better, but it's, it's about the same. So anyway, check in again when I can. So I broke camp this morning about 7:45. Got on the trail only a few minutes after that moving through these rock formations here if we're kind of tricky walking I have a little bit of a sore ankle I'm hoping it'll stretch out a little bit here before long and I'll be able to move comfortably so I'll be heading down to Stony Fork soon I figure I'm about nine ish miles to the road near Antrim and then it's about a four and a half mile road walk which I'm kind of hoping I might be able to catch a ride somehow. Uh, and then uh, about eight or nine miles through the forest to finish up. So um, this would be a pretty long day if I can't get a little ride. If I can get a ride, it won't be that bad. But, but uh, just trying to work my way through here and figure out how to get home today. <laughs> so... Um, it was really cold last night. I think it might have been again the coldest night. I think it was a full moon and it just seemed just brutally cold. Uh, my thermometer had like mid 30s so it was uh, definitely definitely a chilly chilly night so uh, kind of forces you to move a little quicker in the morning. So again just keeping my way working my way down here through these rocks and trying to get my way home. So I made it down here and I'm along Stony Fork. You can kind of see it down in there. It's uh, pretty gorge down there, but you're not really all that near it down here. I'm gonna follow this for a ways and then I believe shoot up across it. it was, I was kind of hoping it might be a shallow area to cross, but looks like I'm gonna have to get on my water shoes. So that's uh, not my favorite thing and it's something I'm probably gonna make a comment on uh, when it comes to my recap of the hike here after I'm done, I, um, I think there are a number of reasons why the West Rim Trail probably makes a whole lot more sense than this. Um, for continuity's sake and for a few other reasons, and I'll probably lay those out at some point. So This is called the Little Falls of Stony Fork. This is a very pretty little valley there, and you got the falls here. Cascades and runs down through there. Nice little, nice little creek valley. Still, I'm hoping to get done with it real soon because I'm tired and I want to be done with it. So for a change, a blowdown tree actually worked in my favor because I could cross right across that tree right there. Just goes across the stream and the trail crosses right over there. You can see the orange blazes. So looking downstream right here, I see a blaze right up there. So I'm across the stream and didn't have to put on my creek shoes. Well, prayer one answered. So hopefully I uh, can have a little more blessing the rest of today. Make up, make some time here, get to the top of the plateau where hopefully it's at least a little bit warmer and uh, warm, warm up and dry up a little bit. It's very humid and very wet. So, so I made it to the top of the hill from Stony Fork. And now I've been kind of plateau walking following this old road for quite a long time. Um, I'm uh, getting pretty tired. It's about 11 o'clock. Means I've been walking about three and a half hours. I couldn't tell you how far I've made it. I'm really hoping and praying that I've made it at least five miles, six miles would be nice. Um, it's been kind of slow going. I haven't really made great time. My ankle's been really, really sore. Like a ligament or something in the front of it. And it's really hindered me quite a lot. So 
I'm thinking definitely going to be dropping my heavy pack at some point in a place where I know I can get back to it and then just carry the, light, the lightest stuff back to my car. So, um, anyway, we'll see. Got a little creek to my right starting here. Not sure what it is. I'll have to look at my GPS, but hopefully this is one of those. I think I got to go through a couple small creek valleys and then uh, start making the turn back going kind of more toward Antrim. So we'll see. So unfortunately, this is where my attempt at the PA Wilds Trail ends. I really, really wanted to finish the whole thing and thought I had a shot at it today. But uh, an ankle that started to get pretty sore last night for some reason just all of a sudden came out of nowhere. I didn't trip and slip or anything. It just seems like it gave out. And it was so painful that I could barely walk down hills. A flat was doable, but hard. Uphill was fine. And downhill was very, very difficult to where if I misplaced a step or if I slipped at all, I was gasping in pain every single time. So, um, the last straw, I was coming down this little creek right here called Slide Run, and it was very steep and poorly marked. And I don't know where, but somewhere the trail crossed and I came down this grade. Uh, I was not on that grade, I was over on this side somewhere beating the brush, getting down to here. I saw this spot here. The trail actually goes down, crosses, then goes back up over up that hill right there. Um, I came down, I saw this trail register and a sign that says Morris is 1.5 kilometers. I know that Morris is in cell phone service because I've had cell phone service there before or worst case there is a little bar there. I am going to do my best to call Pine Creek Outfitters and hopefully bail out and they'll take me back to my car. It's going to cost me a bit, but I can't risk my health anymore. Um, I don't think there's any way I would have made it 20 plus miles today on an ankle like it was. Um, and I don't think that I really could stand staying out here for another night. So uh, last night was cold and I think tonight's supposed to be even colder. So I really just feel like for my own health, I need to get home today and get things taken care of, sleep in my bed for a night, rest up tomorrow, and then go back to work on Wednesday. So it's really disappointing. In the end, my GPS says I went 174.2 miles, so longer than the actual trail was intended to be. Uh, there were a few mistakes in the mileage estimates. Um, I think that it's a beautiful trail. Um, I think I would love, love to have uh, been able to finish it, uh, it would have been the very first person that we know of to have done it and there's something pretty cool about that but um, in the end you can only do what your body allows you to do and my body held up I think pretty well for 170 plus miles and just gave out here in the last day I think uh, not, not going to be ashamed of that I'm a little sad to not finish but it uh, looks like I'm going to have about 1.5 kilometers these kind of folks on the mid-state trail don't like to use miles like the rest of us Americans, they love to do all these backwards kilometer stuff and uh, hopes, I guess, that we're going to somehow change, but I wouldn't expect it. And uh, in the end, um, I guess uh, it's definitely worth a, a trip out here to see the PA Wilds, whether it's part of the trail or the entire trail. Um, it's just gorgeous. Um, I think I'll have some thoughts. When I get home, as far as things that I would probably change up a little bit on it, I think I would probably have went up the West Rim Trail instead of coming over this way. It's, it's, it's a better track, I think, better, better taken care of, many more campsites. Uh, I had a very hard time finding a campsite last night and ended up camping in a parking lot for the trail. And um, I think it's not quite as well maintained. Uh, it's, there's some areas that are really nice, but there's a lot of blowdowns. Um, I just think that there's already a long distance trail. It is the Mid-State Trail, 300 plus miles, uh, that comes through this area and it'd be better to have uh, one that just explores the Pine Creek Gorge a little bit more. So that's my view and opinion, but I could flesh it out a little bit more at some point later. So anyway, I'm going to head down the hill or hobble down the hill more appropriately and hopefully 
get a ride out of here before too long. And if it's a little longer than I expect, I guess I'll go sit in the restaurant and eat some good food. So catch you later.